So welcome to Hack the Real Side podcast with Heather, Ashley, and myself, Kira, where we dive into the personal journeys of people in the entertainment industry with a little bit of cheeky banter. So today we are super excited to be interviewing <laughs> Yepa Letbeck Larson and Ooh. you've been foreigners and Hotel Caesar, but we probably know you best for playing the lovable rogue king of the shit weasels, Heston. Thank you, thank the you. Kingdom. And you've also been voicing um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which I guess sort of goes with hand in hand with the whole, whole Viking-y thing. Mm -hmm. So how are you doing? Doing good. How are you guys doing? Really great. Yeah, snow has arrived and it's a uh, snowy winter now. Almost, we almost had a snowy Christmas. Oh. It just came a couple of days too late, but that's all right. Uh, we had a smidge of snow, which I live just north of Atlanta, Georgia, so we don't ever get a white Christmas, and we got like a dusting of oh. snow, and I was like, oh, I'll take Celebrate. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Apparently, UK had an official white Christmas because there was like a tiny piece of snow somewhere up north. <laughs> yeah, someone Absolutely. saw some snow somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was just ice and sugar from like a high rise, but we all pretended it was snow. <laughs> We needed that at the end of 2020. We needed to feel that we had a white Christmas. Yeah. So something was magical. Mm -hmm. Right. So I will start with the ridiculous questions that don't make sense at all, but we enjoy doing it. So are Great. you ready? <laughs> no, it make sense. Oh, but at any time, you can refuse to answer. You can flip it around and ask us. Uh, or you can just pretend that your camera's frozen. And we'll maybe move on. <laughs> no, don't actually do that. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I thought... <laughs> I was just going to try and see if I could manage. Oh, no, we'd freak out. Uh, I could. Happened. We were yeah. interviewing Mark Rowley the other day, and that happened quite a lot. And we were like, oh. Yeah. Is he thinking? Is he frozen? Because usually when you freeze, <laughs> you're in a frozen position. Like, yeah. But when he froze, it was like. He always looked really catalogued, didn't he? Really like. <laughs> he always strikes a pose. He's got the little freeze meter on the side of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> that must be what it was. Yeah. Love it. So, okay, question one. What mythical creature do you think would improve the world most if it actually existed? Mythical creature? Mm -hmm. Or it could be one that is no longer around. I would love to ride a mammoth. Ooh. Yeah. Mammoths are awesome. They are pretty good, aren't they? I think they? they're twice the size of elephants. No, maybe not twice. Oh, well, maybe. Ooh, Double the size of an elephant. Yeah. Huge, hairy beast with, yeah. That would be awesome. You would have matching tusks like Heston mm -hmm. and a mammoth. Mm -hmm. I would mm -hmm. ride into Winchester on a mammoth. Yes. Oh, shut <laughs> <him> up. <laughs> if you could only work with Magnus Bruno or Tobias Sandman again, who would it be? That's not fair. I know. Okay, since Magnus's birthday is today and he's got enough attention already, probably, I would say Tobias. Oh, okay, that's quite nice. <laughs> well done. Uh, what set of items could you buy that would make a cashier most uncomfortable? Oh <laughs> Ashley's like, what? so <laughs> many ways. Flowers and give them to the cashier? I don't know. Well, that'd be quite nice. That See, my mind be was quite comfortable and awkward if there was a long line and, <laughs> you know. Serenade them as wait, well. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I don't know. It's got to be two items, though. So the other items. Two items. Two flowers. No. Uh, flowers and condoms, then give them both to the cashier. Okay. That would be super awkward, I think. <laughs> really awkward. Yeah. With the, like, little good luck thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what is the funniest joke you know off by heart? Oh, I can do it. I, I only know one joke in English. That's fine. And it's my favorite joke. It's a pirate joke. Um, a pirate walks into a bar and the bartender says, excuse me, sir, but is that a steering wheel in your pants? Yer, it is driving me nuts. <laughs> I love it. It has layers. Oh, I do love that one. That's a brilliant one. I'll have to wait a few uh, more years before telling my daughter that one because she's always asking. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I don't think she'd get it yet because she's only two. But you never know. Um, is there a part of a film that you saw when you were a kid that has scarred you for life? Oh, yes. Most definitely. Halloween 2. I was, uh, I saw that 
when I was, I think, 11. And it all takes place in a hospital. And it's super, super nasty and super creepy. And of course, a couple of years later, I have to have my appendix removed. So yeah, those two nights in the hospital was, yeah, it scarred me for life. Oh, that's horrible. I was seeing Michael coming around every corner with his knife up. Oh. Ugh, gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. <laughs> How old were you? Good question. If you and the Love Kingdom cast were in a rock band, who would have what role? Who would be singer or roadie or drummer or bass player? Well, it would be if you get the whole cast, it would be more like a choir. It have to be all of them. <laughs> uh, I would definitely be, definitely be the front man. Uh, I would have Alex as the roadie. So he wouldn't take, uh, uh, you know, attention from us in the band because he's too beautiful. And, <laughs> you know, um, actually, we, we have this uh, kind of a running joke uh, that, uh, well, I kind of started it with the, the Uhtred and his pretty boys. I, I call them the boy band, Finn mm -hmm. and Mark, Finn and everyone. And I'm kind of the guy who makes metal covers of their songs. So yeah, so. yeah, they're very in sync, and you're like much more cool. <laughs> yeah, yes. Is there skits of this? Is there like a uh, little videos of? I think, you? yeah, I think no, no, not not yet. Uh, there was a guy that made an album cover. I was sitting on on the stairs of my trailer and just looking fierce and taking pictures of myself <laughs> and he made it into he made it into an album cover uh which was really cool it's on my instagram well i believe this season you should be recording some uh covers oh yeah I, I used to be in a band when i was uh when i was younger ah I was, I was did you sing you sang yeah. yeah what kind of music was it metal and can we find that on youtube no it was way before internet and everything so there's no, no it, it was when you had to have your cell phone in a suitcase to carry the battery. Oh yeah, we remember those days. <laughs> we actually we actually uh, we actually do you know uh, I don't know if it's called that in uh, in English though, but a tensing choir like a, a Christian choir mm -hmm. in a church and we all joined up there because then we could use their um, use the room for uh, rehearsal. <laughs> so we at night we, we sang with them. And, and after they left, we played like Slayer and Metallica and stuff. Oh, that is brilliant. <laughs> what a juxtaposition of the two different types of music. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfect. So if you were arrested with no explanation, what do you think your friends and family would think you were arrested for? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's not bad. Then. Being too honest to <laughs> someone <Yeah>. loudly. <laughs> loudly. With fists? <laughs> no, not with fists. Just, <clears throat> just presence. <laughs> Public disorder, fair enough. Public disorder, probably. We'll yeah. that one. If your five year old self suddenly found himself inhabiting your current body, what do you think the first thing that five year old you would do? Diet. <laughs> I don't know. No, five year old. No, no, maybe I'll. Yeah, I think I would actually go out and drive a car because I love driving. I try and buy beer or something. Mm. Try and chat with women. Admire your beard. Yeah. Ooh. Strong beard. Am I out of focus here? Is it a bit too dark? The creepiest thing you think you could whisper to a stranger as you pass them in the street? The creepiest <laughs> thing you could. Sorry. <laughs> Very timely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, yeah, that would Very be the creepiest day. thing someone would whisper to me right now, anyway. <laughs> oh, that would be horrible, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. If you could write any ending for Heston, what would it be? King of England. Ooh. Good ambitions there, then. Not even Everybody in Last Kingdom wants to be king of England. England. <laughs> it seems like a lot of work to be king. It seems like a lot of 
No, you can't do what you want. Yeah, I don't know. He's quite happy for King. I could see Heston. King I Heston. think I think everybody. I think I would be happy with King of England. Yeah, but I'll settle for Bebenbur, Lord of Bebenbur. Oh, could this be like a spoiler alert? I hope not. <laughs> Utrecht, doesn't, Utrecht doesn't get it, but I do. In your mm. face, pretty boy. <laughs> yeah. That's brilliant. Uh, is there something that you are really good at cooking that you bring out to impress people, dinner parties? Uh, um, uh, pork roast, uh, pork belly. Mm. I'm really good making With, like, that. The I'm, I'm, I'm actually not too shabby a uh, chef, to be fair. Um, I've I always like loved them. cooking and I always like to experiment with stuff and yeah. I don't know about you girls, but I heard that as an um, invite to mine when lockdown's over. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah, go. I heard that too. And now it's on video. <laughs> He's like, you can edit that out, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, that out. This is our this is our proof that he's gonna cook for us. Yeah, yeah I'll cook for you. Of course. <laughs> Come to Salem and I'll cook for you next summer. Oh yeah, yeah, you're doing an appearance there, aren't you? Mm -hmm. There you go, girls. An appearance in Boston. Oh, okay. I was reading about that today, actually. Exciting, very jealous. So, what's your favourite weapon to have battle scenes with? Because I can see that sometimes you've got a sea axe and sometimes you've got double axe, like sword and... Yeah, I always have, a, in season four, uh, I've always had a sword and an axe mm -hmm. and the dagger, uh, or a sea axe, and uh, in season four, I also have uh, Dagfin's uh, dagger as a kind of a tribute. Oh, that's nice. So I have two daggers. I am the, the character with most weapons and uh, not likely to use them. <laughs> You're just like at the back watching everybody else fight. I'm just going to let them. It's, <laughs> it's not very thought through because if you want to run away, you shouldn't weigh yourself down with stuff. <laughs> That is a lot of stuff, Harry. I mean, you, you have like, light versions, not actual heavy axes or anything. I have light versions, yeah. So and the uh, real versions. Yeah. So which one is your favorite? I would say the axe. Yeah. It's the most brutal thing, yeah. Is that best for when you're choreographing or you're in a fight scene? Is that the easiest one to swing or is it? No, you can do a lot of stuff with an axe because it's uh, hooked. You can use it as a hook. You can pull people towards you. You can split shields. You can, I mean, it's not very good for parrying and stuff, but mm -hmm. um, for attack, it's really good. Yeah. Think I need to get myself an axe. You better. <laughs> How long does it take you to learn the choreography for the fight scenes? How long do they give you to do it and how long does it often take you to do it? Well, it all depends on <clears throat> what we're doing at the time. If it's like in battle week, for example, we have battle weeks, uh, you probably heard. Um, then there's not a lot of time because there are a lot of fights that need to be choreographed. Luckily, I kind of cheated and became... Um, uh, a teacher in stage fighting many, many years ago. So I don't use that much time, to be fair. Sometimes I get to choreograph my own stuff as well. Oh, uh, well, that's pretty badass. It is. <laughs> oh, really? I, I used to, I have been working as a stuntman as, and a stunt coordinator as well back in the day. So, uh, yeah, I, I cheated on that one before I came. You didn't cheat. You were just very well qualified. That's right. <laughs> I bet the other guys are really jealous of that. Well, no, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of the guys and, and, and the girls also have been fighting a lot before they came. And, and as of now, everyone is really good. I mean, yeah. I'll be watching out for that now, though. I'll be watching out for scenes that you might have choreographed yourself. They should put, like, a little credit note at the bottom of it as you're doing it. <laughs> no, it's, it's, I mean, if there's, like, a huge battle and, uh, I mean, uh, you don't get to see it, I think, but do you remember season um, two, episode six, the whole Death is Coming sequence? Mm -hmm. Death is coming! Uh, there was uh, loads of fights all over the place and it was all in one take and uh, 
uh, Levente Lejac, our stunt guide coordinator, came up to me with a guy and he said, this is the guy you're fighting, now make a fight. So that was pretty, uh, pretty cool. Did they record that bit or was that not on camera? No, it was not. It didn't, it wasn't on camera. <laughs> just, oh. just outside. That's a shame. Yeah, but I mean, if it was, it was a good fight. Really, just two moves and he was dead. No problem. Yeah. No match. No, no match. I think he might be taking it easy on you because you're like one of the stars, but I'm, you know, I'm not saying. No, no, no. But the fun thing is that <clears throat> I, uh, mm. on my Instagram, I think I have, I, I put out uh, my first fight rehearsal from season two when I was uh, chained on the stairs there. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I remember Levente told me years later that the first time he saw me, he was, he was, was like, is that what I have to work with? Of course, I was chubby and happy and, you know, but then I just started moving and, yeah. That's a little bit oh. hard, but you proved them all wrong. Yeah, uh. basically. Well done. Uh, well, that is the end of my section, but I do have to ask actually, because I keep forgetting, um, the horse that you rode, I think it's in season four, beautiful long mane, mm. uh, black and white. Oh, Joker. Sorry? Joker. Joker, that was his name. Uh, whenever mm. I see, I'm just like, that horse is stunning. Are you much of a horse rider? Is this something you did beforehand? I did. I actually did the horse riding in, uh, in school. Uh, so I knew a little bit, but, uh, as I said on my first riding assessment in back in season two, um, uh, our horse master asked me if I knew how to ride a horse. And I said, when other people ask, yes, when you ask, no. <laughs> so she said that was a good answer and told me to get on the horse. <laughs> so I mean, i'm better now yeah I'm better now. Uh, that is just such a stunning horse though he's beautiful uh, and he's my soulmate or yeah he is next time you see him give him a little stroke for me oh yeah for sure thank you so much for asking my answering my ridiculous questions it's been fabulous wonderful questions uh well now that we've gotten some sillies out of the way um heather's going to take on the serious questions of acting uh -oh. So serious. So we start out asking everybody this because our purpose with this podcast is just to explore individual journeys in this industry because they're all so different. And so the first question we like to start is what got you into acting? Was this something at a young age? I know you started with, with stunts, but this industry, was it something that you knew at a young age you wanted to do or did you just kind of fall into it later on? Actually, I started off as an actor when I was 11, and I've been working ever since. Um, the stunts was only a thing that I wanted to have in my, uh, in my suitcase of skills. Mm -hmm. So in case that I, w had to, I could be able to do my own stunts if it was asked of me. Um, uh, but I, I started off when I was 11, uh, I was in a choir, a boys choir, <clears throat> uh, the NRK, which is so similar to the BBC, it's the, the government run TV and radio network, uh, the choir there. And some people needed to cast some young boys for uh, some Easter program or something like a musical uh, about Jesus and Judas and disciples, but as kids. So I did that audition, but I didn't get it. But a couple of months later, a director wanted to make, um, or was going to make a, a film about a young boy who had lost his father at sea and his mother had ma remarried and all, you know, social drama of the eighties, especially in Norway, maybe. Uh, and she saw the casting for that uh, Easter thing, and she just, I want you. And I just have worked since then. Basically. So did you? So did you ever go to like a drama school, or when you started at eleven, you just basically worked your way through? I worked my way. I've I haven't taken any acting class whatsoever, ever. That's amazing. Which, weird so I, I when I was uh -huh. oh go ahead I, when I was 
yeah, in my twenties, a lot of my friends were applying for the the theater academy in Oslo, but I had already been working for twelve years. So I thought that maybe if I disappeared, it was a stupid thought because everybody needs education. But I thought that if I went away for three years, because they don't allow you to work while you're in school. So that the business would forget me, like I was no, someone, like which I wasn't. But it was a stupid thought. So I never applied for that. And uh, I, I seriously, I haven't been to any acting class ever. I've only been to like stunt classes and stage finding classes and stuff. So how did you get your first agent then? Like, how, did you just start submitting or did they see something you were in and come scoop you up? I got my first manager back in 2007, actually, really late. Uh, ma agents and managers weren't really a thing in Norway until maybe after the uh, after 2000, maybe. Uh, and uh, he had seen a lot of what I've done and he just wanted me on board. He just got started and stuff. <clears throat> that was in Oslo, a Norwegian manager. Uh, and my LA representatives, Crimson Media, um, I got three years ago after uh, season two. Wow, so sweet. it's fairly fresh. <clears throat> yeah, and that's incredible. You've not taken any classes. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I just, I think I've... <sighs> I just found a way to work uh, that works for me. Uh, it doesn't necessarily work for everyone. Uh, and as I said, I wish I had done it in some ways, but in other ways, I'm glad I didn't. It's, it's, very, uh, it's a very um, torn thing in me. Mm -hmm. kind of. Did you have to do any specialized training for, for your stunt work? Yes, I, I, I specialized in fighting. Uh, I did all, the, I did the high falls and hit by cars and crashing cars and, and stair falls and pyro and everything. But I, what got me, I, what made me attend stunt school was uh, that I had been to several workshops in stage fighting already. Uh, so I specialized in that. Oh, how old were you when you started stunt school? That was in 97. So, yeah. Uh, 25? I'm old. Solo, your dad's old. You're, you're we're all old. Peers. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird, though, because I don't, I feel like a 14-year-old in my head. That's what I say. Yeah. Okay. So strange. Until I do exercise, and then I realize that I'm almost 40. And I'm like, oh, I try to pick something up, and oh, I'm 48. <laughs> yeah, or you sleep wrong, and you wake up, and you're like, oh, my God, how did this happen? All I did was lay there. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's crazy. It's, it's uh, when you pass the 40, when you, pass, when you get to be 40, you just wake up and have aches. Yeah, it's like downhill after 30. <laughs> Super yeah. down. No, 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 no. 40. Yeah. I would agree for a woman, 50. definitely. Definitely well, downhill. downhill too. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not very steep. It's kind of like slow and then it goes. You guys have it easy though. This is always my argument. Guys get hotter as they get older and we just get older. We have to work harder at it. Um, I don't agree with that. Yeah. I don't agree with that <clears throat> at all. Yeah. I mean, uh, beauty is not necessarily just the, the way you look to me. Oh, women everywhere are going, I love him. Where is, what's his number? <laughs> Chris, you need to get Sorry, a bro. solo there. That's it, get solo there because a bearded man holding a puppy. Heads are going to Okay, come here. I'll, I'll, yeah. <laughs> come, come here. Come here. Come here. He's just looking at me like, what are you doing? I, don't, I did not come. sign up for this podcast. <laughs> TV. <laughs> Oh, hey, bro. Oh, that was not the dog I was expecting you to pick up. <laughs> this is Han Solo, the Yorkshire, Yorkshire Terrier. He's, uh, yeah, he's, he thinks he's a cat sometimes and he climbs me. 
And his name really is Han Solo. Oh yeah, it's yeah. my childhood hero. So. Oh well, you'll like my shirt then. Yeah. See it? Hold on. Heather came prepared today. Yay. I know. Oh, see, my neighbor calls us Solo and Chewy because I look like Chewy now. Chewy, Chewy was my favorite. I used to when I was younger. I could do the Chewy voice. I can't anymore. But I was we'll able try. to do it. Try. I, I've, I've tried. It's not. I do. It's try. Heather, don't you do Yoda? Does that ring a bell? If we want yeah, to yeah, Yoda's way better than Chewy. Chewy, I can't get the. I can't get it. It's like if you don't practice it, you lose it. Ooh. Yeah, Dude, Yoda's Yoda, way better. Like, hold on. Um, Dog is cute. He is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. me not it. it gets better. Yeah. I could do it better. <laughs> really good. Good. Yeah, I feel at home now. <laughs> well, speaking of doing like voices, you've you've done some voiceover work. So, how did you step into that area? Was it something that you knew you wanted to do, or was it just an opportunity that presented itself? Well, I did my first voice when just after when I was a kid. I think it was twelve or thirteen. But but, but then it's it's kind of a natural thing in Norway. I think more natural than any. I mean, in, in England and U.S., you have voice managers and voice agents and stuff. We don't do that because it's kind of in the same package. Uh, but I've been voicing cartoons and, and stuff for many, many years now. <sighs> Maybe uh, 20 years or something, yeah. Have you done... I, I like did, you... uh, I did uh, uh, Maui in uh, Vajana. Amazing. Yeah. Which was my... Um, yeah. Before Assassin's Creed, that was the height of my voicing career. Get to. And it only took you two hours, right? Singing, yeah. Singing? You're going to sing some You're Welcome for us? No. Do you have to double the singing as well? Yoda. Yeah, of course I, I do the singing. That is I amazing. Do it, I do it in Norwegian. I just, I just assumed they would keep the original songs. I don't know why I assumed that. But now, yeah, I really, really want yeah, to. Yeah, he speaks Norwegian and then bang, <laughs> English singing and bang. <laughs> That's so English of us to about that. Huh? Okay. So that's very English of us, or like, you know, yeah. to assume. Yes, it's yeah, to assume that everyone just wants to hear the songs in English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, no, it's fine. Yeah. But if we'd known that, or if I'd thought about that, I definitely would have emailed you beforehand and be like, could you prepare a little bit of a song for us? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's on YouTube. You can go and watch it on YouTube if you want to. And it's on Spotify if you... Search for my name in Spotify, then uh, it's there with its three and a half million plays or something. Wow. That's Sorry to all the Norwegian parents out there. Sorry. But man må leve. So when you got, when you um, voiced for the Assassin's Creed video, was it an audition or did they come to you because they wanted your voice? Actually, it was an audition. Uh, I, I uh, auditioned for another role uh, than I ended up with. And uh, so first I sent a self tape from Norway and then I went to London for, uh, um, for another audition uh, and uh, met the guys and, and, uh, and I didn't get that part, but I got a better part. So, well, so when you do your so. auditions or when you're recording, like, do they put, well, I know not in the dish auditions, they don't put the motion things on, but, um, like when you're recording no, I didn't do the motion capture. I didn't do motion capture. There's a huge yeah. Canadian guy that does me, but I did the, all the lines first, and he had to act upon my lines. Yeah. So when you were reading the lines, did you feel that you had to move and act a little bit to get the voice? Oh, you, you always have to. I mean, if you just stand there, you, you, it, you it could be anyone. Could be you could put in a pillow, and it would make a better performance than you. To be fair. Uh, I have to, and I, I uh, yeah, it's been out for so long. I, I play uh, Thor, mm -hmm. the war, God of War, and mm -hmm. another guy. And when I did Thor, I had a little Thor's hammer in my pocket just to, you know, get some help. That's awesome. I'm going to have to ask my boys because they love video games. I don't know if they play Assassin's Creed or not. Oh, they should. It's a really good game. And they should, I mean, I've seen online that uh, it's kind of called 
because it's t- the title is Assassin's Creed Valhalla, mm-hmm. but you know, people are calling it Assassin's Creed Last Kingdom because there are so many of us. In oh, it. there is, isn't there? There's quite a few of you in there. Yeah. Wonder why that is then. Excuse me. You, do you know why there's so many of you doing it, or are you just all? The same? I think there. First of all, I think that uh, they are huge fans of the show because they've seen, you know, they've seen every show and 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 movie when they they've been making this game for five or six years. So. Mm-hmm. To get uh, and uh, they fell in love with Last Kingdom, I think, uh, which was really, it was really almost got awkward. But I've been a fan of Assassin's Creed games for many years, and uh, when I did the self tape and when I went to the audition, uh, it was a fake title on the project. But I was, I knew that it was a game. And I knew where the head office was. So I just did a little investigation, uh, investigating, and I landed on that it might be the new Assassin's Creed game. And I was so stoked. So when I got to the edition, I, was, I came in the room and I said, I said before anyone says, and hello, <laughs> before anyone says anything, if this is what I think it is, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> And uh, Darby McDevitt, the narrating director, he looked at me and said, I think it is what you think it is. And then it became sort of like a meet and greet. Mm -hmm. Really weird situation because I was stoked to be there and talk to them, the developers and the writers and, and, you know, of uh, of, uh, a franchise that I've been in love with for many years. And they were feeling the same about me since I was in the last kingdom. So it was like for the first 10 minutes, we were just praising each other. So it was really (laughs) easy to go from there, to be fair. It was all fated by the gods. Yeah, that's Mm -hmm. right. Have to be. Mm -hmm. So you've had a lot of different um, roles, like your voiceover, your stunt, your coordinating for stunts, your actor. What, for each of those, what do you enjoy the most about that particular role? Hmm. I love acting because it's what I know and it's, I feel (laughs) so strange, but I feel that when I pretend to be another person is when I really come alive. It's so weird, but I love being on set. I love playing theater. I just love the whole symbiosis of everyone pulling together to achieve one thing and uh, doing their best. And, uh, and, uh, and if you really love your work, it's not work. It's, it's playing. And I love to play with my friends, you know? So there's that. And I love, I loved the uh, choreographing fighting because I love to start, I, especially when I'm working with amateurs, when I was out working with amateurs and they had never hold, held a sword before. And two days later, they looked like trained warriors. That was, that's really cool. Uh, the stunt coordinating was just stressful to me because <laughs> the only thing, I mean, the main thing is to uh, keep it all safe and make sure nobody gets hurt. Um, that kind of got a bit stressful sometimes. I, none of my actors or myself or my stunt guys or girls uh, ever got hurt, which was, I'm super proud of, wear it as a badge of honor. But uh, at one point it got too stressful. And also uh, I've been working with stunts for so long uh, so the people forgot that I was an actor. So I just had to say no mm. and uh, go back to acting. I still get, you know, people calling me, can you choreograph? Yes, I can, but I don't know if I want to. But I'm in The Last Kingdom on Netflix, dude. Like, <sighs> yeah, yeah, sure, any day. <laughs> <laughs> but do you do most of your own stunts? Are you allowed to? Yes. Yes, I ha- have done everything so far, except for galloping, because they won't let me. 
insurance thing. Um, but I haven't done huge stunts. I mean, we have the... Uh, <laughs> my biggest stunt, actually, in this... In, in Last Kingdom was when Alex kicked me off that tree stump 17 times before we started fighting. <laughs> that was yeah, so that was a rough day. Backside. <laughs> huh? I think you had some bruises on your backside. Yeah, but luckily I'm padded from nature. So, or, no. To go back to that galloping thing, do they not let any of them gallop? Or was that, like, is that yep, specific? No, no, no. Uh, Almost none of us get to gallop. Wow. Yeah. What is, is it because they would want you to wear a helmet and you just can't wear a helmet? Like, obviously, yes. is, is that why? Yes. Yeah. Who's the last one? I don't yeah. know what gallop is. What is it? Uh, riding fast on a horse. Oh, okay. That was the fun I, part. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically the fun part, or oh. else it's just moving from A to B. No fun on set. <laughs> Low. <laughs> no fun. <laughs> So when you go to these, like, like when you said, like, your battle weeks and stuff, like, is there, like, physical training aside from just the moves that you have to do? Like, do you do any other kind of training for it? Because it's got to be physically exhausting. I mean, it can be, but it's super fun. And, you know, fun is not work. And if you're doing fun stuff, you can be tired, you know, because you're not bored. So, uh I mean, some of the guys, I mean, the boy band, they, they work out all the time, all the time. And I just, it's kind of been, become a, <laughs> a little thing of, I don't have to work out now. I'm, I'm not, definitely not going to work out now that you guys are working out all the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 uh, I've done more this year because there hasn't been anything else to do, basically, since we've been locked down. So. But uh, yeah, no, I don't much. I should. So, I know yeah. I should, but I don't. Well, I like the idea that you don't have to because when you're on set, like it's exercise anyway, I feel this is where I'm going wrong with the gym. Obviously, the gym is too boring. I just need to go down there with an axe and just start swinging at things. <laughs> yeah. Best way of moving weight. Yeah, but of course, I mean, there's a lot of cardio involved. So, so uh, on a serious note, I should or one should have one's basic, cardio. Basic level uh, of fitness. Yes, you should. <laughs> because when you, as the, you know, when I fought Uhtred in the woods, we did that over two days. And when you've done it for eight hours straight and you start off by getting kicked off a stump, you know, 17, 15, 17 times, something happens with your body. You just can't, I want it, but I, you know, the will is there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you should you should stay in shape. Uh, of course you should. But I'm just a slacker. Do you find it because obviously you you speak more than one language? How many languages do you speak? Four. Is American and English two different languages? I like to probably think. should be depending uh, on. Okay, because like, then it's five. Because the they make sense. We have. You think it was. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, Norwegian, Danish, Swedish, and English. Basically. Wow. Do you but I have, a good, I have a good linguistic air, so I don't have to listen to a lot of stuff before I, I get the gist of the, the language. Yeah. I was going to ask, do you find it hard or difficult to juggle between languages, like for the different roles that you play, or are they all just like just first nature for you? I mean, I weirdly enough, I find it easier to act in English because I think English is a cooler language than Norwegian. And uh, a lot of lines, for example, in Last Kingdom, I've translated them into Norwegian and trying to say them, but it just becomes so strange and weird and uh, too much. But in the, it's easier in English, yeah. I love I love uh, acting in English. Are you going to try to do a Southern English accent one day? Southern English. Uh-huh. What for, uh, American or? American. Yeah, American. Southern American. I used to could. I don't know. Yeah, they can teach you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I could teach you. They say I'm. Yeah, yeah. 
do not have a southern accent at all and they're like yeah i'm like no i don't you don't have too much of a southern accent do you you have you been listening to her (laughs) no (laughs) i do a really good job of hiding it (laughs) yeah well if you were if you were to you know do it properly how what would it sound like <laughs> Hi, I'm so happy you decided to come on and talk with us today. Ah, it's so much easier like this because it's, it flows way better, and I don't have to try so hard. Yeah, <laughs> keep talking like, like that. I feel Woo! like I sound like the biggest like redneck. Like, it's, it's the stigma of like Southern American, where if you talk with the Southern accent, they're like, God. Probably what? doesn't help to be blonde either. Mm, yeah no <laughs> i mean i'm blonde so i know uh yeah yeah, yeah. i loved it sure. i love the accent i'm just gonna bring it out all the time then the best part was when i first, uh, uh outside of atlanta which is obviously a bigger town than where i'm from and i pulled up to the drive through and i'm like hi can i have a cup of ass and they were like a cup of what sure like, you can ass? what and my friends. What a cup of ass. <laughs> yes. That's like Meet me in the toilet. To <laughs> oh, that's Here. good. I love that accent. Um, so you've been on a lot of TV series and then obviously like movies. Do you have a preference for filming one over the other? Or do you no. just love them both? I do. What are the perks that. for um, like your TV, like the TV series? What are like perks over films for those? It's a difficult one. I mean, it depends on the project. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you have better, more time shooting a TV show. Um, it's all about time, maybe budget. Uh, there's a much bigger difference screen versus stage. Uh, that's a huge difference, uh, basically. But TV and film, I don't find it very that's you know, much different. Different. So, do you prefer to play characters who are more like you or farther away from? Far away. Because I'm me all the time. Why should I be me? So what would be like your ideal character that is like super different than what, than who you are? Heston. Heston. Hmm. We asked Mark and he said a serial killer. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, Heston is, is a narcissistic, murderous, raping uh, opportunist and I'm none of them. So. But he's so likable. How? Yeah, because he's a psychopath hey, and a sociopath that. and he makes you like him, you know? God, I mean, but that is a really good job on your part to play someone who is such a terrible person mm-hmm. and for people to, he's one of my favorite characters. Like I hate him, but I'm like, God, I love him. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. About, like how you have like developed that character because there are times I'm watching the show and I'm like, Oh my God, I hate him so, so much. And then it's like the next shot you're like rooting for him to make it. And then you're like, why am I rooting for him? He's a terrible person. What is he is a terrible person, but he brings, he brings, I think he just goes around having, trying to have as much fun as he can. Yeah, mm-hmm. Basically he's, he's not bound by honor, mm-hmm. you know, like all mm-hmm. everyone else is so bound by honor and so mm-hmm. tied down. He's just a free guy just roaming the lands, trolling nobility, uh, and uh, doing what he wants. And he he loves to set people up against each other. And when they've killed each other, he just goes in and pick up the spoils. Uh, uh, he's I an asshole. I can definitely see Heston's Instagram would be like, hashtag YOLO, hashtag zero fucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you said he trolled people i'm like god he would have like the best instagram account he would, yeah. yeah he would maybe i should make one yeah <laughs> definitely have to be done yeah um, but i also love i i love i play i've done a lot of comedy in norway and i love that i love um you know playing really dumb or 
clumsy or, you know, I, I, yeah, most definitely as far away from myself as possible. Is you there one? I, that, did you see what I did there? Yes. <laughs> Is there one project that you are just so super proud of? I mean, obviously all of them, but is there one that just stands out that you felt so blessed to be a part of it? Yes. In Norwe um, the first thing that comes to mind is a Norwegian film, which is called in English, I think, Kicking It. Kicking it. Hmm. It's about a girl who gets uh, leukemia a 14 year old girl mm. uh, and I play her doctor at mm. the hospital. That was amazing. I've, whenever I do a premiere, watch myself uh, either on television or in a movie theater, I rarely, you know, I, I almost always try to analyze myself or, or the character, did I do that? And how, do, oh, I should have done. But I remember on the premiere, without spoiling anything, I just cried my eyes out because it was a beautiful story. It was so beautiful. And uh, yeah, I what really year? recommend it. It's a, it's a very happy, sad film. What year was that um, in? Because I want to go watch it now. Yeah. 2010, maybe? Something like that, yeah. Um, well, you were saying like that you just kind of prepped for your character. Do you have a routine or a ritual of how you prep for your characters? Or do you just get the script, um, get the sides, and then you just kind of change them every single time just based off of what you get? It depends on if I know what it is beforehand. If, if for example, it's a show that Last King already done a season, mm -hmm. and I know what kind of you know universe we're in and and stuff. But I, I always, of course, read the uh, the script first. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm. I was thinking about it because I was reading the email <laughs> that you guys sent me, and uh, I think I'm a feely act I try to feel I don't try to reason as much why people why I'm saying the lines that I'm saying I more try to get the feel of it why it's hard to explain you see if I had if I'd taken any acting classes I would be able to explain this much easier um where does a sentence come from, you know? Uh, and is it, is it lies? Is it truth? Is it, um, you know, it's hard to explain. And it, I, I always research, like, uh, for, for example, let's, let's take Heston. Heston, I got, I got the script. I got a scene. I got two, two scenes. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I had to go by, I mean, nobody told me who Heston was. Mm -hmm. They just give me the script, do this, and let's see your interpretation of this. So the only thing I had to go of was what he said, mm -hmm. how people react to him, and, um, uh, and also this little description. I mean, it was just one line describing him, and it was, mm, meet Heston a seemingly friendly man, which smile never quite reaches the eyes. So there has to be something there, you know? Why? Because he smiles, but he doesn't smile with his eyes. So it means he's a fake smile. Mm -hmm. So you have to just get the head. You know. And then, of course, I, I found out that he was a, a real character. Or, I mean, he, 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 he actually lived back in the day. So I read a lot about him, uh, heard a couple of podcasts about him and found out he was a fierce, fierce guy. And people hated him, yeah. for real, yeah. hated him. If you go to his Wikipedia page, there's a quote from a monk. He just hates him so much. So it was, it's <laughs> that sentence 
the smile never quite reaching the eyes and what the monk said 1200 years ago that wow, I built you. my character on to be fair so that one wow. description of has I mean it's perfect I mean that is like him and it's like that's him mm -hmm. yeah I try <laughs> um yeah your um, audition tapes are online and I just was wondering your choices but you clearly told me why you made your choices which were amazing and you had so much um action in them which I feel like you don't always or at least when I'm doing mine I don't have that much action so it's like this is probably why he's a professional but it was just amazing <laughs> how you put the words and and then not words and then just your actions and your subtle movements and your big ones just really brought that scene alive so cool um thanks yeah, really really good audition. thank you yeah um Yay. yeah <laughs> well, I was going to ask you how much of yourself do you put into your characters, but you say that you don't like to play yourself at all. You just I mean, of course, you, I, 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 I'd, I'd rather actually, I'd rather take stuff from people I know or have known. Mm -hmm. uh, I've known assholes, <laughs> you know? Couple. Uh, so I steal from them and, uh, you know, but then also I, I uh, of course, there's there has to be something of me in it. I think the the jolliness of Heston sometimes comes from me. Um, maybe some of his fears comes from me. And, uh, you know, we all put on a mask for different situations. And I like to do that with him as well. So you can see him act a certain way to someone and then completely turn around to someone else. Mm, yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, and we know that you, you actors audition for so many roles that they don't get. So rejection is, is very common. How do you deal with being told no? Much better now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I've, that's probably... Uh, the sentence I've heard most in my life is, I'm sorry, well, it wasn't you this time, mm -hmm. you know? So you just have to, now it's just, it just shrugs off. Of course, it's, if it's something that you really want, then it's harder. Um, I had an audition this year, which I'm so bummed out of, but because of COVID and everything, it turned into a Skype thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was so, so weird and awkward because I had to sit in this chair in front of my own computer in my living room trying to be something. And it's just, it was too much of me in here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I had just taken the phone and gone outside, it would be so much better, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a shame because it was a, a role that I really, really wanted. And the director said, you know, just to let you know, I think you're really good and I really want you to do good. So that, yeah. <laughs> That's it. No pressure there. But they haven't made the film yet, yet because of the whole situation. So how are... <laughs> Obviously, you've been in a lot of things that we've talked about, but how are you finding the tr transition because you have a U.S. Uh, agent to get into more U.S.-based films and things like that? Like, what is your process in doing that? Are you just oh, I, I just do. I mean, they, they put me up for a lot of things, um, a lot of good, good things. Sometimes they send me stuff that I can see. I'm not getting this. I'm not six foot two, dark hair and, you know, have a six pack but i still do the tapes because if i do a good tape then the caster would you know notice and and recognize me and maybe have me in the back of the head next time uh but i wanted to i want to i want to work as much as i can to be fair uh the only dream i have actually uh quite boring uh with being an actor is just to be able to act until i die mm -hmm. i don't have any of course there's directors and actors you want to work with but 
I don't want to, I want to play Hamlet one day. I, I, I don't do that. I just want to be able to act, to be able to, to do this for the rest of my life. Is there a dream role? I know you said that you're not that, but if there was the one role that you could get that you just want to play before you die, what role would that be? It's more of a, what I would like to know, what I would like to do at this point is play a role that I've never played before. Uh, not the goofy, funny guy, not the rah, rah, rah guy, but some other guy. Nice. Yeah. Really uh, and there are franchises, there are stuff I would love, I would love to be in a Star Wars thing mm. because, you know, my dog's name is Han Solo. Right. And, you, wouldn't want to <laughs> you know, uh, and stuff like that. And it would be cool to be in a, like a huge sci-fi. I want to do sci-fi. I really want to do sci-fi because mm. I love sci-fi, like space and stuff yeah. um, but there's not this one role that comes to mind more more something I haven't done yet would be fun nice. well um, at the end of every podcast we'd like it to be again. are we closing the end already well I, I wanted to this be- is too nice I want it to be aware of your time. I mean, listen. I'll say hey, we're in lockdown. <laughs> There's okay, nothing so to do here. We can keep going. I mean, I can go just like let me get a zip of this. <laughs> we can continue to talk. I've got all kinds. Of I can go get some moonshine. Like, that Ooh, great, like in the woods. That's some chicken <laughs> and grits. That you got a mason jar. How long does your hair and makeup take for the last thing? I'm just curious. Oh, uh, about ninety minutes. It's so crazy. Because I have my own beard, so mm-hmm. uh, they don't have to put one, you know, single strain of hair and use three hours to do that, like they did with Bjorn Siegfried. Mm. He spent three hours every morning in that because they had to paint his tattoo, they had to fix the beard, they had to do a lot of stuff. So it was three years. No, three. Three, three years. years. Wow. Well. <laughs> we found out. We found out. We actually did the math when he when we were done, and we found out that he had been sitting in that chair for three weeks straight. Wow! And I bet taking it off takes almost just as long too. Yeah, well, it takes uh, about half the time. Yeah. Half Although time. we're women, so you're not going to get too much sympathy of how long anything takes to get. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So yeah, I do the. I have this um, half wig thing. Mm. Oh, okay. With the dreads, mm-hmm. and then I have the tusks and a couple of scars and the tattoo and the eye. So it, it takes about ninety minutes. It was funny because we it, it has always taken ninety minutes, and for season four we tried to take it down, and it worked really fast. Mm-hmm. Then it took ninety minutes. It's um, crazy. Not to change the subject, but I do have two questions that I always like to hear. You can change the subject. Um, uh, these are curious questions, but we didn't ask you this time. Oh, funny questions? Is this like fun questions? What movie would you replace with the Muppets? Oh, Muppet. oh what movie? The Muppets. Muppets. Cast with the Muppets. Muppets. Yeah. Muppet. What's a Muppet? <laughs> Muppet. Sorry, movie. Muppet. What movie I would replace with the Muppets? Yeah. Which <laughs> happens with human, human people. Recast with the Muppets. And who oh. would be the person? That's it. <laughs> That's why I don't ask the question. I don't ask the hard questions. <laughs> Kind of see Kermit as William Wallace in Braveheart. Oh my oh my God. God, that would be amazing. I could just see his face painted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Painted blue and, you know, uh, Miss Piggy okay. as a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Uh, and then do you think you would survive? How long would you survive in a zombie apocalypse? <laughs> I would survive. Uh, I wouldn't go outside. I know all the rules. Shoot him in the head. No, I kind of, I kind of, I, I don't think I would last that long. If, if you guys have seen Zombieland with the, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. rule number one is cardio. <laughs> That's true. They could be like walking dead zombies where they don't sprint. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't know if you know, but I did a zombie movie once called Dead Snow, a Norwegian one. Yes. Was where, we, where we fight Nazi zombies, which are the worst kind of zombies because they're Nazis okay, as well. And they're running. 
uh, we had to make them running zombies because if they were walking zombies in, in knee deep in snow, they would never arrive. They wouldn't be a threat. So you like, okay, we're waiting. I mean, it's been like, yep. two oh, I'm so scared. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. I will fight. Like, what advice do you have for people that are starting out and trying to get into the industry? Leave it at the door. If you're going to audition, don't go in there and apply for a job. Don't do that. Just go in there with confidence and show them what you can do. And when you leave that audition, let it go. Because it's out of your hands. There's nothing you can do about it. The other people are deciding if they, you're the right for it or not. But it's not. It's all about the money. It's all about, you know, you have to fit height-wise with a, another guy or another woman. It's so many things that you can't control. So just go in there and have fun, make it interesting. And, you know, I mean, every day on The Last Kingdom, I try to give them a reason not to kill Heston. Mm. You know? Mm -hmm. Has it worked, season five spoiler? <laughs> Can't talk about it. It worked in two, three, and four at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I th I know that they have thought about it a couple of times, but then I just had to give them a reason that they can't, mm -hmm. and it has worked so far. I the other one, the other advice, adv advice, advice is actually from a film from American Samurai with Tom Cruise. He's in the village and he's got Bob, as he calls him, the samurai that just walks behind him, the old guy, you know, he's free to go wherever he wants, but Bob's always there. And they uh, see other samurais training, you know, with the bokens, with the swords and, and stuff, and he wants to have a go. And he tries a couple of times, he gets beat down. And then a guy comes up to him and says, too many mind. What do you mean? Too many mind? What are you talking about? And he says, mind the audience, mind the opponent, mind the sword, too many mind, no mind. Mm -hmm. And I, ha I can't count how many times I've thought about that just before I enter or before I go on. Yeah. Because, you know, that also works in an audition situation, you know? Don't think about getting the job. Don't think about anything else but what you're there to do and do that as good as you can. Mm -hmm. And just be there. Be in that moment. That's the most important you can do. Thing you can do. That's what I think. So those two uh, mm -hmm. advice is, is what I uh, take with me. So sometimes, again, I'm just starting out, but I find myself I, um, almost like an imposter syndrome, like that I'm not good enough. You know what I mean? Do you ever... I very much know what you mean, yeah. Yeah, so do you have... I mean, but then there's this voice, obviously, in my head that's like, we're doing this. Like, you know what I mean? Despite what that other part is saying. How do you personally just feel like you've either beat that or or how you get past it, if you feel like sharing that. It you know, I'll, I'll tell you an interesting thing that happened to me in season two, because of course, at that time, I'd done a couple of international films, but not huge roles or anything, just been there and done small stuff. But that was my biggest role internationally. And also I had been cast more like a, the funny sidekick in Norway for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and this was my f third day on set, but it was my first line. It was when Eric and Siegfried leaves, um, is it, uh, yeah, the town escapes me, when they leave to fight the Scots and I get this, you know, mm -hmm. I, I have to protect the city from the, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. And I get up on the st stairs there and I say, Remember what we need more than silver is women, red-headed women. That's, that was my first line or second line. But in my head, while 
rehearsing that line, uh, I never imagined that there were going to be a hundred extras and 50 other, uh, that there were going to be a huge amount of people. So I remember, I remember, I say something to Eric and then I go up on the stairs and the camera's on me and I grab a cup and I say, remember what we need. And I just stop because I said meet instead of need. And over a split second, I thought I can either just go now, just leave and my career will be over, but that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Or I can just do it again, which is no problem at all. So I just went, keep it rolling. Let's go again. And I just did it. And, you know, the, the, there was this fight or flight thing, uh, which is very, very interesting when you're in that situation. And you get, I mean, um, I'm so happy I didn't choke. Of course, I wouldn't. But still, you get that a lot. I, I get that sometimes. I don't have to do, do mistakes even. It's just anxiety. So many people and it's going to be aired. And, you know, of course, now I'm, I've grown into Heston. And whenever I put this cuirass on, I'm just Heston. It's no problem. I, I get to be. But uh, when stuff is new and fresh and huge, it's really daunting. Mm -hmm. But then you have to remember, I, I found a way to justify that I was there. And I was just looking at all the other actors, brilliant actors, David Dawson and Harry McIntyre, Eliza Butterworth and Alex and, you know, all these amazing actors. And I was there. So there had to be a reason while I was there. Uh, so I, I'm probably good. Let's go again. I feel yeah. like, um, I don't know if this happens for you, but like almost when that moment when it clicks, you know what I mean? Like you have that fear, but then you just have that moment when you like go on. That's what I obviously try to remind myself of. Like you said, like you're like, let's just do it again. And you did it and you're like amazing. I think that's what it's kind of cool how to just, you can shut that off almost like you just flipped. yeah but yeah because if, if <laughs> the thing is that at that time i wasn't enough into character mm -hmm. because i was if i was completely in character that wouldn't have been yeah i wouldn't have started to think about me then and my future you mm -hmm. know it was just a split second you know how many thoughts you can have in a really short amount of time but still so, you know so uh, I love it when, yeah, when it just clicks, as you say, and you just, what, we're done already? Okay. Where did the scene go? You know, I've had a lot of different jobs, uh, but me, I, I couldn't go in and do the same thing every day mm -hmm. for my whole life. I couldn't do it because I would just wither and die. I would wither and die. But as an actor, you get in and there's new stuff every day. You get to, you know, you get to explore new things every day, every week. Even a scene that you've done 10 times and you just try to flip a little bit and it becomes a whole different scene and that's new, you know? So that's really important. Keep things fresh and, and just, uh, and also if you, if you are a working actor, you're one of the luckiest people on this planet. Mm -hmm. Never forget. There are millions, if not 1 billion people that want to be in your shoes. Yeah. Never forget. Every time I walk on set, I go, God, I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. You know? So, yeah. so important. I, uh, yeah, I love my job. And uh, I would be super bummed out if I couldn't be an actor anymore. I don't see that happening anytime soon. I think you're okay. Fingers crossed. <laughs>
Well, we've taken up a lot of your time tonight. It's been like two hours. So is there anything you want to end in? Is there any place that people can catch up with you, your Instagram handle, anything, any products you've projects you've got coming up that you want to products my uh facial creams are coming out soon no wait, what? Uh, <laughs> you're kidding no i'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> like wait really <laughs> yeah. like, oh my gosh you should make beard oils <laughs> yeah we should um, yeah. yeah i mean uh i have uh, an instagram and a twitter uh which is uh which i i post stuff sometimes i go live especially on instagram which is uh, Jeppy BL Insta. It's a really fun, yeah, neck. But yeah, and uh, Beck Yeppe, I think you could probably write it somewhere on the yeah. screen. Yeah, we'll write it when we post it. Uh, so if you come and follow me there, I'll probably uh, I I answer a lot of DMs and stuff unless you're nasty. Uh, yeah. And uh, I go live sometimes and chat with you if you want to. We will put a notification on. So notify me when he goes live. <laughs> yeah, do that. It's thank been a real pleasure. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you for joining us. It was great. Thanks for having me. It was uh, amazing. Made my day. I had a bit of a crap day, so now it's good. Oh, okay. well, we are very, very glad that we managed to help. Thank you. <laughs> me too. Take care. You too. Right, have a good one. Bye. Bye. Bye.